Hi everyone, it's Laura here for Studio Katia and in today's video I'm going to share with you how to create a birthday card using the Cactus Hugs stamp set and some coloring with Illustrator alcohol markers on craft cardstock. I started by doing some die cutting to create the elements that I'll be using on my card base. I die cut some Bristol Smooth cardstock by Strathmore using the dotted square frame die by Studio Katia and then I also used the rectangle die in the Darling Ribbon and Dotted Frames dies to die cut some Nina Desert Storm cardstock to the standard A2 size, so 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half inches and I'll be layering these two panels on my card base. The images that I chose today are part of the Cactus Hugs stamp set. It's really cute with all these cacti images and it also has some smiley faces. I didn't use them today but they're going to add a touch of cuteness to your cards. I wanted to spice up things a little bit and do something slightly different from what I usually do, so I decided to do some no-line coloring with my illustrator markers, but this time not on white cardstock, but on my Nina Desert Storm cardstock. The ink that I used for my stamping is Ink on 3 Fade Out Ink, which is great for no-line coloring and it will work with alcohol-based as well as water-based media. And as I said, for the coloring today, I'm going to use my illustrator markers. Now, because alcohol markers are not completely opaque, they will show up differently on different colors cardstock. So if you like, you can try out your colors on a scrap piece of cardstock to see how they will look. I actually skipped this step, I knew that basically I wanted to go for a muted palette and the Nina Desert Storm cardstock just helped me in that sense and also I was just going to use some yellow greens and dull greens as well as some browns so I wasn't expecting a huge change. They are still different than what they would look on normal cardstock but as I said I didn't feel like I had the need to test them on a separate piece of paper. For my card today, I stamped and colored all the images in the set. They aren't very big, so the coloring doesn't take too long at all. And also, once you have chosen your greens, your browns, and I'm going to use some purples for the little flowers on the tips of the cacti, you're basically done. It's just a matter of, you know, start coloring. And for me, that's a really relaxing thing to do. I'm not going to show you the entire coloring process because I don't feel it's necessary for you to see every single image on this card. I added my shading with the light coming from the top right of the screen so that I have my shadows on the left and lower portion of the images and you can see that by adding shading we are creating a sense of dimension and of depth on the images. I also decided to color my cacti with two different color combinations for my greens. The first one was DG4, DG3, DG2 and DG1. And the second one that I'm showing right now is YG3, YG2 and YG1. Obviously you could use one set of markers if you preferred, but I felt that this way I was going to create a little bit of extra interest in the card and a little bit of color variation. Also in this case I'm adding my shadows on the left and lower portions of the image and I'm starting by adding my darkest marker in those area and then blending it out first with my mid-tone marker and then with my highlight marker. And then to intensify the shadows and create a little bit more contrast and uh, enhance sense of dimension, I'm coming in with a second layer with the same markers. Once I was done coloring the images, I die cut them with the coordinating dies. And by doing this no-line coloring, I did lose a little bit of the detail that you have in the stamped images. And some of it I'm going to recreate now, but just for the two cacti where the dye also cuts the thorns. So I'm just using the stamp packaging as a reference to see where the thorns were added by the illustrator and I'm using a DG2 marker, so it's a little bit of a light marker, it's like my mid-tone marker, to add the thorns back in these two cacti and then I moved on and started assembling everything. 
Before actually moving on, I wanted to just say that you can totally skip this step. I did it only because some of the die cut images included the outline of the thorns, as I said, and I thought this would give them a more finished look. But in any case, after we have taken care of our images, we can go ahead and start assembling our card. I adhered the squared grid on my card base using my Studio Katia liquid glue because that gives me a little bit of wiggle time to position everything correctly and make sure that everything is straight and centered. To add a little bit of extra interest to the card, I decided to raise my images on some Studio Katia foam tape. I first arranged them on my card base without actually adhering them. I took a picture and I used that as a reference and then I went ahead and glued everything in place. At this point I moved on and started working on my sentiment. I went for the happy birthday greeting, this is part of the Cactus Hugs stamp set and I stamped it with brown ink on some Nina Desert Storm cardstock that I trimmed down into a banner using my guillotine trimmer. I'm using the plastic guard to help me line up the sentiment on my banner and then I also cut one of the sides at an angle to create a little bit more interest on the banner itself and I teared it flat on my card front. At this point it was time to add some finishing touches and I wanted to keep the card pretty simple so the only thing that I added are these gold foiled pearls by Studio Katia which I'm gluing down with my embellishment wand and Studio Katia glue and I think that with or without pearls this design would work well for a masculine card too. I have my card base here, this is some heavyweight white cardstock cut to 4 and a quarter by 11 inches and scored at 5 and a half inches and I'm going to use again my Studio Katia liquid glue to adhere the card front to the card base. I made sure that everything is aligned correctly and that finished off my card. Here you can see a close-up of this project. It was really quick to make, but I think the fact that we used this Nolan coloring adds some extra something to the project itself. And as I said, I think this would work great as a masculine card as well. And that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I inspired you to create with the Studio Katia Cactus Hugs stamp set. If you haven't already, you can subscribe for more card making and paper crafting inspiration. Thank you all so much for stopping by and have a great day.